The Association of Foreign Relations Professionals has called on the federal government to make foreign policies that are based on national interests. The president of the association, Ambassador Ghani Lawal, made the call while briefing journalists during the association's fifth annual lecture held in Abuja. Lawal, who commended the government for the role played in Africa in adverting cubes and undemocratic change of power, says, the national interest of Nigeria should be to fight terrorism and build a strong economic base. It is often said that there is no permanent friend or enemy in the international environment, but permanent interest. But as permanent national interests evolve, a friend today can become an enemy tomorrow. It is expected that a nation will weave its national interests around the weight of its military industrial complex and natural resources to earn a favorable comparable edge in the global intercourse. At present, the national interest of Nigeria is to build a strong economic base, fight insurgency and terrorism, and decapitate corruption monster. Therefore, finding resources to actualize this interest in the international arena remains the cornerstone of Nigerian foreign policy. Democratic governance offers the best approach to pursue these foreign policy goals. It must seem that foreign policy is an extension of internal policy. It's better illustrated by Nigeria's insistence on zero tolerance for military coups and on democratic change of government in Africa. This requires that Nigeria must demonstrate exemplary leadership by tenaciously nurturing and deepening its internal democracy and assist less powerful countries to maintain their democracy. And for Nigeria to continue to maintain leadership position, it must increase its weight of military industrial capability, economic prosperity at home, and readiness to assist its neighbors and lesser third world democracies. It must invest abundantly in African Union mantra of regional integration and cooperation, silencing the guns and support for less developed neighbors, and conflict resolution through dialogue and compromise. In conclusion, it is instructive to reiterate that the Afrocentric nature of Nigeria's foreign policy which was bad since October 7, 1960, including its variance of concentric circles, economic and citizen diplomacy must be maintained. It has served us in boosted and continues to serve us till today as exemplified by the emergence of our new president as the chairman of ECOWAS on first appearance at its summit in Guinea-Bissau. We are aware of the unusual and new developments such as challenges posed by non-statal actors, narcotics, proliferation of small arms, and increased transnational crimes, as well as new dynamics in global affairs requiring improved strategies. But we do not think we may, there may be the need to try to reinvent the wheel. Instead, we are better served by strengthening what has worked and acknowledge it and revisit what has not worked and improve on it.